Hello, today we're doing grade five, unit nine, session 30 on the sacrament of holy orders. So let's begin with a prayer. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Come Holy Spirit, come by means of the powerful intercession of the Immaculate Heart of Mary, your well-beloved spouse. All you holy angels and saints pray for us. We ask you, blessed mother, that you would obtain for us a great appreciation for the sacrament of holy orders and a great great devotion to the Eucharist, which we have as a gift from the sacrament of holy orders, as a gift from your son, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death, amen. Saint Joseph, pray for us. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. So if you click on unit nine and um, in, the, in your book, if you open your book to page 224, this is the, the last unit here of our um, grade five book. And this is, as you know, the whole theme this year was sacrament. So now we're on the seventh sacrament, which, which is holy orders. So the introduction here, we'll read that. Jesus, Jesus established the Catholic church to carry on his ministry after he ascended into heaven. He made the apostles the first priests, actually the first bishops, at the Last Supper. And more than 2,000 years later, their successors, the bishops, shepherd the faithful. In this unit, you will explore the sacrament of holy orders, the ways the ministerial priesthood serves the faithful, and how all baptized Christians share in the priesthood of the faithful. So the sacrament of holy orders is the sacrament by which men become priests or the lowest level, they become deacons. The deacons do not have the ability to absolve people from their sins or to confect the Eucharist, which they don't have the power to call down the Holy Spirit and change bread and wine into the body and blood of Christ. But um, priests certainly do have that power and bishops who are high priests also have the power to ordain others to the priesthood. So if you would click on um, the painting, okay, which is called the Miracul Miraculous Drought of Fishes on page 225 in your book, you see uh, a painting that was done um, back in the 1500s by Jacopo Bassano, the Miraculous Drought of Fishes. And um, the story of this event is in Luke's, Luke's Gospel chapter five. So, while you're looking at this, I'm going to read to you that account of um, Luke 5, verses 1 to 11, which you can also read. I believe it's written, it is here on the computer screen if you want to follow, or it's on page 226 in your book. While the crowd was pressing in on Jesus and listening to the word of God, he was standing by the lake of Genesaret. He saw two boats there alongside the lake. The fishermen had disembarked and were washing their nets. Getting into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, he asked him to put out a short distance from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the crowds from the boat. After he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into deep water and lower your nets for a catch. Simon said in reply, master, we have worked hard all night and have caught nothing, but at your command, I will lower the nets. When they had done this, they caught a great number of fish and their nets were tearing. They signaled to their partners in the other boat to come to help them. They came and filled both boats so that they were in danger of sinking. When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at the knees of Jesus and said, depart from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. For astonishment at the catch of fish they had made seized him and all those with him. And likewise, James and John, the sons of Zebedee, who were partners of Simon. Jesus said to Simon, do not be afraid. From now on, you will be catching men. When they brought their boats to the shore, they left everything and followed him. Okay, so then um, there's some discussion questions. Let's just go over those briefly. Like, who are the people in this painting? Well, they're the... Um, the apostles. This is um, the beginning of Jesus's public ministry where he's calling his first apostles. So we have um, Peter um, is the one who's kneeling at his knees. Okay, then you have Andrew walking towards him. 
and um, James and John are two of the other three. We don't know which two they are, but we know that um, those, those four, Peter, Andrew, James, and John, two sets of brothers, Peter and Andrew were brothers and James and John were brothers, all became um, of the 12 apostles. Those were uh, of the first ones that Jesus called. And he says, Jesus said to Peter and Andrew, come after me and I will make you fishers of men. Um, what did he mean by that? Um, we have to think about that. Okay, so they were fishermen. I mean, they had spent their, their, that was their job. That was the way they earned their living was by catching fish and selling them and feeding their families with the money that they earned. So, but Jesus is um, calling them away from that job to another job. And he's saying, I will make you fishers of men. So you have to think about what he's talking about. And, um, you know, henceforth you shall catch men. Like, so what is the kind of um, fishing that Jesus wants them to do now is, is to draw souls into the kingdom of God. So not just catching fish for people to eat, but catching souls so that those souls will be able to rejoice with God for all eternity, which is the mission of the priest. I mean, that's in a particular way, it's the mission of priests to bring souls into the kingdom of God through preaching, through administering the sacraments. Okay, um, then on page 227 in your book, there's a, um, a passage called Lower Your Nets. And um, they want you to think about what can you see, um, what does Simon have to do in order to be able to catch all the fish? He has to lower the nets and he has to ask for help um, from, his, from James and John in the other boat. Can you begin to make any connection between Simon's response and the sacrament of holy orders? Well, I mean, that's a little bit, um, I don't know if, if you can answer that question easily or not, but I just did explain one of the things to you, which is to bring souls into the kingdom of God, but also um, Simon's response where he kneels down at Jesus' knees and said, depart from me for I'm a sinful man, O Lord, that nobody is really worthy of that honor. The priesthood is such a high honor that no man on earth has the, um, except for Jesus himself, um, has the, the dignity that would be required of what a priest does. It's just so astonishing. And St. John Vianney, who's the patron of, of priests, one time he said that he would kneel before a priest before he would kneel before an angel because priests are the ones who bring God to the earth. If you think it's just amazing the power that God has given to these men. But I wanna say at the beginning that um, it's no um, insult to women that God didn't choose women to be priests because he chose a woman to be his mother. Okay, so his closest co collaborator on the earth was a woman, not a man. It was Mary who brought him to the earth. And women still have that role. They have the role of nurturing the life of Christ in souls and, um, and raising them up in the faith. So each um, of the sexes have an equal dignity in the eyes of God, but they have a different role. So, um, you know, it's like men can't give birth, you, you know, and um, so it's the same in the spiritual reality that women and men have a different role, complementary, both of them very um, important, but, but they're not the same role. Okay, so now we're gonna click on um, the story of holy orders, which in your book is on page 228. And here we see Jesus handing keys to Peter. Jesus did something special when he established the sacrament of holy orders. Out of all of his disciples, Jesus chose and consecrated 12 men who would share in his priesthood in a, in a way unlike any other. We are all called to be like Christ, but called men who receive holy orders are called to be like him in a very special way. Jesus gives them spiritual powers so that all people everywhere can encounter Jesus here on earth through the sacraments. Without this sacrament, without bishops, priests, and deacons, we could not speak of the church. We, we couldn't because um, the, the Holy Eucharist is the source and the summit of the church. That means it takes its, its origin from and um, reaches its highest point in the Holy Eucharist. But without priests, there is no Holy Eucharist. 
These ministries cannot be replaced for they are what make up the organic structure of the church herself. Peter the Rock. Jesus knew he would die on the cross to save mankind and establish a church to carry on his work until the end of time. He gave Peter the responsibility of the keys of the kingdom. Peter would be first among the apostles and become the first pope. You can read that in Matthew chapter 16, where they come into Caesarea Philippi and um, Jesus asks the apostles, who do men say that I am? And then um, who do you say that I am? And Peter's the one who answers and said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Then Jesus says, blessed are you, Simon, son of John, for bless, flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my father who is in heaven. And I say to you, you are Peter. And upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. So that was the conferral of the, the primacy on Peter. Peter became the first Pope of the Catholic church. The one who would speak for Jesus after Jesus had ascended into heaven and sent forth his Holy Spirit. So the Pope is called the Vicar of Christ because he's appointed to be in that role that Peter was in as chief representative. Jesus asked his disciples who they believed he was. Some people thought he was a prophet, but Peter said that Jesus was God. Jesus said to Peter in reply, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my heavenly father. So I say to you, you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. With these words, our Lord gave Peter authority to head the church on earth. To give you an example of the authority that Peter exercised, it was Peter and the apostles who determined that Sunday would become the holy day that Sunday would become the Sabbath. Now that was, you can't even understand how much of a cultural shift that was because the apostles were Jews and their whole life they had celebrated Saturday as the holy day, as the Sabbath. But, but when Jesus rose from the dead on Sunday and sent the Holy Spirit on another Sunday, 50 days later, they realized that that was the new Sabbath. That was the new holy day, Sunday. So, and that was determined by Peter and the apostles. The heart of Christ, now I'm on the Lord's Supper. The heart of Christ's commands to the apostles came at the first Holy Mass, which was the Last Supper on Holy Thursday night, the night before Jesus died on the cross. Before the Passover feast in the upper room, Jesus showed his apostles how they should lead his flock by loving them to the end. He got up from the table and washed their feet. He said, I've given you a model to follow so that as I have done for you, you should also do. This act was one of love, like all of Jesus' acts. The washing of the apostles' feet gave form to his new commandment. I give you a new commandment. Love one another as I have loved you. So you also should love one another. This is how all will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. Finally, Christ commanded his apostles to offer his saving sacrifice in the Holy Eucharist. Then he took the bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which will be given for you. Do this in memory of me. Then he took the chalice of, of wine and, and gave it to them. He said, This is my blood of the new covenant, which will be shed for many. And every time a bishop or priest calls on the Holy Spirit and consecrates the bread and wine at Holy Mass, and it becomes the body and blood of Christ, the bishop or priest is following Christ's command at the Last Supper. After his death and resurrection, Jesus spoke to the apostles. He sent them forth as God the Father had sent him. Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, receive the Holy Spirit. And holy should be capitalized there with Holy Spirit. That's the proper name of the third person. Whose sins you forgive are forgiven them and whose sins you retain are retained. As Christianity spread through time and place, the men who had been consecrated by Jesus passed on their sacred authority. St. Paul told of how Jesus' sacred authority is passed on to those men who follow in the line of the apostles. That's called apostolic succession. And it's one of the marks of the Catholic Church. 
the church is one holy catholic and apostolic it, it goes back to the apostles which is proof that the catholic church is the church that jesus christ founded saint paul wrote to saint timothy i remind you to stir into flame the gift of god that you have through the imposition of my hands because that's how holy orders is conferred by the bishop laying his hands on the, on the man to be ordained and praying over him. Like the apostles, today's bishops and priests do not act by their own authority. The authority bishops and priests are given to act in, pros, in persona Christi, capitus, in the person of Christ, the head of the church, comes from Jesus himself. He gives them his very own sacred powers. He consecrates them as he did his first apostles to preach and teach, to sanctify and to govern the mystical body of Christ, the church. Okay, so now you could pause the video and answer the questions, and then we'll go over them together. How many men did Jesus choose to be apostle as his apostles? Twelve. Who was the first pope? St. Peter was the first pope. Why do you think the papal seal, the symbol of the church, is a set of crossed keys? Well, the reason for that is because Jesus gave symbolically he gave um he said to you i will give the keys of the kingdom of heaven to peter because keys were a symbol of authority he didn't literally give him a set of keys like you used to open your door at home but but to 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 confer the keys on peter meant you have the authority over the house the house being the church of jesus christ the catholic church where and when was the first holy mass celebrated it was celebrated in the upper room at the last supper in jerusalem on the night before Jesus died on the cross. In ancient times, the lowest servant in the household was expected to wash the feet of guests. Why did Jesus wash the apostles' feet? He did that to give them an example of service um, and, and humility, like um, that we should be humble because Jesus is God. He's the second person of the blessed Trinity who has no beginning as God. He's the almighty, the creator of heaven and earth along with the Father and the Holy Spirit, but he humbled himself to become a man, to redeem us, to take on a human nature, to suffer and die and rise again, to redeem us, to send forth his Holy Spirit. But he, he said at one time, he said, whoever exalts himself shall be humbled and whoever humbles himself shall be exalted. So um, we have much more reason to be humble than Jesus does because Jesus is the infinite God, as I said, but but we are much less humble than he is. So he's giving us an example of by um, doing the, the task of the lowest servant. He said, um, you call me master and Lord and you, you say, well, for so I am. If therefore I, the Lord and master have washed your feet, you also ought to wash the feet of one another. For I've given you, I have given you an example that I, as I have done, so you also should do. Now, um, so that means we should do acts of service for one another. We should take care of one another. What is the new commandment? How should we understand this commandment in the context of the sacrament of holy orders? The new commandment is love one another as I have loved you. Now, how Jesus loved us was by laying down his life for us. And that's what priests do um, when they are ordained. They lay down their lives in service to the bride of Christ, which is the Catholic church. They, they, they give their lives as a sacrifice um, they don't die immediately, but, but they have to offer up many of their own um, legitimate desires that they offer those up for the kingdom of God, for the sake of the kingdom of God. For example, um, in the Western rite, the Latin rite, they give up the ability to marry and have children, children of their own. I mean, they have many spiritual children, but, but they're giving up that very good right that they have as men to marry and to, and to raise an individual family. They're giving up that right for the family of God. What command did Jesus give the apostles in Luke 22, 19? He said, do this in memory of me. Now that's a very, very important line because that's the, that's the line of their ordination. Because see, he had just given his body and blood um, in the Eucharist and he says, do this in memory of me. That means he gives them the power to take bread and wine and to call down the Holy Spirit and repeat the words that he said at the Last Supper and the, and the bread and wine become transformed, transubstantiated, 
into the substance of Jesus Christ, body, blood, soul, and divinity. Who gives bishops and priests their authority? Jesus himself gives them their authority. Okay, then there's a question here. Um, which do you think is the most important command Jesus gave his apostles? Um, I, I don't think that you can really um, um, distinguish between those two commandments that we just talked about, which were um, love one another as I have loved you and do this in memory of me, because they're, they're like um, two sides of the same coin, so to speak, because greater, greater love cannot be shown than to lay down your life for your friends as Jesus did. And that was how he gave us the Eucharist. So, so they're, they're related to one another. So I don't think you can say one is more important than the other because they're, um, how Jesus shows his great love for us is by giving us his own body and blood, soul and divinity and Holy Communion. Okay, so now we're on um, degrees of holy orders. Okay, and this is page 231 in your book. The Sacrament of Holy Orders has three degrees, bishop, priest, and deacon. Those in holy orders are to be true spiritual fathers to those entrusted to them and to give their lives for Christ's flock. Bishops have the fullness of the Sacrament of Holy Orders and the fullness of Christ's sacred powers and authority. The sacrament brings them into the Episcopal College the bishops in communion with the Pope. It doesn't mean a college like you go to like a school. It just, it means a body of um, people working together. The bishop is the visible head of the particular church he governs. Thus the bishops are the visible source and foundation of unity in their own particular churches. Priests are consecrated as the primary collaborators with the bishops and have many of the sacred powers and authority of Christ. You can see them exercising their sacred powers when they preach at mass, teach in school, speak out against injustices in society, advocate for the poor and the vulnerable, administer the sacraments. That's the most primary. That should have been first in the list. Hear confessions, offer holy mass, bury the dead, and lead and govern the, the parish, helping to guide all people towards heaven. So the most important two um, powers that the priests have are the power to consecrate, the power to bring, call the Holy Spirit down to transform the bread and wine into the body and blood of Christ and the power to absolve people from their sins. Those are, because um, the other things in the list um, other people can do, they can speak out against injustices and so forth, but only a priest can change bread and wine into the living body, blood, soul, and divinity of the resurrected Jesus Christ. Only a priest can absolve us from our sins in the sacrament of confession. Deacons are consecrated primarily in service of the liturgy of the gospel and of works of charity, which includes service to the poor. They have been given some of Christ's power and authority to preach, baptize, witness marriages, and bury the dead. Okay, so they have, deacons have um, especially the power to preach and to read the gospel at mass, but they don't have the power to consecrate bread and wine into the body and blood of Christ, and, and they don't have the power to absolve people from their sins. So, um, then they can't anoint, they can't give people the anointing of the sick either, only a priest can do that. Um, so there's sacrament, certain sacraments that only priests can administer being um, offering the mass, absolving people from their sins, conferring the anointing of the sick. Those sacraments get, in, um, in holy orders, only a bishop can um, perform holy orders. So, so those sacraments are reserved to, um, to the priests, the other sacraments, um, baptism, marriage, and um, thinking which one that I didn't mention. Okay, I think that I, did I say confession? I don't know. Okay, but, but anyway, there's some sacraments that like baptism, um, a deacon can do or any, in an emergency, anyone can baptize in an emergency, like if a person's dying, um, you even could baptize the person who was dying by taking clean water and pouring it on that person's head and saying three times saying, I baptize with you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And that person would be validly baptized. But, um, but you wouldn't have any power to absolve people from their sins in confession or to offer mass unless you were ordained as a priest. And um, anointing of the sick, holy orders, those four sacraments, um, 
are, are reserved to the priesthood. Marriage is actually conferred by, um, oh, and confirmation. That was the one I couldn't think of, sorry. Confirmation is um, reserved to the bishop or in special circumstances to a priest. A deacon can't confer confirmation. So most of the sacraments with the exception of um, baptism and marriage, um, a deacon doesn't have the power or the authority to perform. Okay, marriage is actually conferred by the husband and wife on one another. Okay, so um, let's um, answer the questions that go with us. You could pause if you uh, would like to first pause. Um, okay, so who is your bishop? Okay, currently our bishop of the Bishop of the Diocese of Manchester in New Hampshire is Bishop Peter Labashi. I mean, if you didn't know, you could look it up on the internet, just look up under, um, if you didn't know that the diocese was called Manchester, you could just look Catholic Diocese, New Hampshire, and, and you would find it. Does your parish have deacons? If you don't, how can you, if you don't know, how can you find out? Well, you could look on the parish website to find that out if you didn't know. But I'll tell you that right now, um, Our Lady of the Holy Rosary and St. Leo parishes do not have a deacon. St. Mary's Parish does have a deacon. And um, we did used to have a deacon, Deacon Steve, but then he moved to Florida. Find a partner or two and share the story of a time when a deacon, priest, or bishop made Jesus' love present to you in a special or memorable way. Okay, well, probably you could um, think of any time you've gone to Mass. Um, any time you've gone to Mass, it's because a priest has been there to offer the Mass and to give you Holy Communion which is an infinite gift. Every time we receive Holy Communion, we're receiving an infinite treasure that is raising our, if we receive Holy Communion worthily, every Holy Communion we receive worthily in the state of grace, um, raises our place in heaven forever. I mean, that's just astonishing. Okay, so now you could um, pause the video again and, and do the degrees of Holy Orders quiz, and then I'll give you the answers to them. The sacrament of holy orders has three degrees, deacon, priest, and bishop. Bishops have the fullness of the sacrament of holy orders and the fullness of Christ's sacred powers and authority. Three. Oh, I think the um, questions are in a different order on the screen. So I'm, I'm reading them from the book, page 232. Priests are consecrated as the primary collaborators with the bishops and have many of the sacred powers and authority of Christ. Four. Deacons are consecrated in service of the liturgy of the gospel and of works of charity, which includes service to the poor. Deacons have some of Christ's sacred powers and authority to preach, baptize, witness marriages, and bury the dead. But burying the dead is not a sacrament. Six, those men who have received the sacraments of holy orders follow Jesus' example by giving their lives for his flock. Seven, Jesus gives those in holy orders their authority. So all authority comes from God. It doesn't come from the bishop. It comes from Jesus Christ himself, conferred through the bishop, through the laying on of the bishop's hands. So let's thank God for the gift of the priesthood because without the priesthood, we would, we would have no way, to, no way to live a life of union with Jesus Christ, which we now have thanks to that amazing gift of the priesthood. And um, I would encourage the boys who are listening to pray and um, ask God, like if, if he's calling you to the priesthood, he, he may be calling you to the priesthood, but you need to discern that. And you need to um, ask the Holy Spirit to show you and to lead you because he could be calling you to, to be married. Either way, he's calling you in the future to fatherhood, either physical fatherhood as, as um, a married man also spiritual fatherhood because um, married men are also spiritual fathers or he's calling you to the priesthood to be a spiritual father to many souls to to lead souls into the kingdom of god so let's pray uh, close by praying in our father and ask our father to send us many holy priests in the name of the father and of the son and the holy spirit amen our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, amen. 
In Heavenly Father, we ask that you would send many more laborers into the vineyard, that you would give us holy priests and holy bishops. And we thank you for those bishops and priests you've given us. We ask you to bless them, help them to persevere in their vocations to the end. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you very much, and God bless you all.